So I got this month's version of Anesthesiology News. Let's flip through it, see if we can find the research paper and do a quick journal club. Let's see what we got here. Let's check this one out. Liberal transfusion strategies, ups infection rates in orthopedic trauma. Hey, look. So this paper was basically looking at anemia or hemorrhage in trauma patients, and there was two arms to the study. Either a liberal arm, which was 7.0 for hemoglobin grams per deciliter, or a conservative arm, which was 5.5 grams per deciliter. Ultimately, what they found out was that the patients who were subjected to the liberal transfusions at 7.0 for hemoglobin had a higher rate of infections that brought them back into the operating room. Let's quickly go over some specifics about this paper. So this name of the study was the ORACLE study, which stands for Orthopedic Trauma and Anemia, Conservative versus Liberal Transfusion. And it was done between the years 2014 and 2021 at a level one trauma center. They had 100 patients, which they split equally amongst the two groups. Uh, the ones that finished, there was 49 in the liberal group and 50 in the conservative group. So there were two different values that the researchers came out with that had uh, statistical significance. The first being an infection within the first month post-surgery. 14% uh, of the patients in the liberal group had an infection, whereas zero patients in the conservative group had an infection in the first month. The second significant thing that they found was that there was a statistical significant increase in how many patients had a deep wound infection, meaning that they had to go back to the OR to get a debridement or a washout. So they found that 10% of the uh, liberal group had to go back in for surgery because of a deep wound infection, whereas 0% of the conservative group had any of these deep wound infections. They also state that the two groups had multiple secondary outcomes and other complications that could be contributed to anemia or transfusions, that these results were similar for the two groups. So the question is, why does the immune system go down with transfusions and leave the patient open for infections? Most research out there states that it has to do with something around the realm of downregulating cellular immunity or how our body reacts to infections. One of the changes that we've seen in the immune system that's been shown in research is the uh, inactivation of natural killer cells. But in terms of how long these cellular changes occur for in terms of the immune system, we don't have a really good answer for that. Another thing that should be mentioned here is that most of the patients that were in this study and pretty typical for trauma patients in general is they're on the younger side, don't have too many comorbidities and are generally healthy patients other than the fact that they're enduring trauma right now. And that might be a good reason why they're able to sustain anemia closer to 5.5 than the typically accepted 7.0 threshold. So now the question is, after any journal club, would something like this change your practice in the future?